So you're trying to be a data scientist, but do you know what they actually do daily? And no, not the theoretical stuff. I'm talking about the tangible day-to-day -day tasks. I have a master's in data science and over a year and a half of experience, and this is what I actually do daily. And I'll not just be telling you that, I'll be telling you the biggest misconceptions, what tech stack I use, and probably the best way to become a data scientist. The role of a data scientist is to derive value from data. That's kind of vague, like what does that even mean? But an example, let's say you were a data scientist who decided to work for your dear Aunt Sally who owns this quaint little grocery store. Every time a customer makes a purchase, that transaction is recorded, and as more and more purchases accumulate, a data scientist would then be able to find patterns in the data. Wow, people aren't buying nearly as much ice cream in the winter as they usually do in the summer, so we should stock less ice cream in the winter, dedicate their shelf space to tea instead, and maybe our overall revenue will increase. That's an oversimplified example, but you can begin to see how a data scientist would affect a company's bottom line. So deriving value from data is just a sanitized way of saying you're either helping the company make more money or you're helping them save money. So there is the trope that tech jobs tend to draw introverts because you're just locked away in some dark room with your computer and your keyboard just coding away with no human interaction. But the truth is it completely depends at the company that you work at. There's a role with a lot less interaction, but you'll still have to talk at least to your team manager and other data scientists on your team. But on the more extreme end, there are roles where you have to literally have meetings with clients so you can get the expectations from the data and what they're trying to achieve with it. So my role is definitely towards the coding side a little bit more but luckily there's still a fair bit of client facing work so I get this beautiful balance where I'm not socially fatigued at the end of the day from just yammering all day but I'm also not a complete hunchback hermit who's just coding away 24 seven. So these are the things that differentiate data science in theory and in the real world. But the two biggest ones I get asked is how much maths do I actually do and how much coding do I actually do on the day to day? It's a spectrum when it comes to maths. There's roles which are, you're basically a mathematician who happens to know how to code a little bit and you actually have to go into the formulae, but that's not my role. My role actually involves a lot less maths and there's two reasons for that. So actually, if you ever wanted to work in AI or with LLMs, NLP is a great place to start a lot of abbreviations but the main reason actually relates to the second main question which is how much coding? A lot. I spend at least four hours every day just locked in my little coding bunker trying to find solutions. So my role is less about maths, but about finding solutions to real world problems using code. But just like maths, it's a complete spectrum. And actually when I started the job, I barely did any Python work. And actually when it comes to visualization, tools like Tableau and Power BI are usually reserved for data analysts. But in my experience, if you work at a small startup, you're gonna come up with all these models and all these data tables and you'll present them to your boss. They'll be like, great, get the data analyst to make a nice visual of this so we can actually present it. And it's like, I am the data analyst. So essentially the tech stack that I use looks like this, but keep in mind that it varies so much. And like I said, at the start of the job, it actually looked a little more like this. Ah, misconceptions. So the biggest misconception is that you'll be building models all day, but the truth is, Actually, let's just think back to your Aunt Sally store. She'll first come to you with problems that she hopes your data skills will be able to solve. So let's say Aunt Sally has her eyes on a brand new Porsche. She's always had expensive taste. But to afford that, she needs to up the revenue of her company. She's tried sticking posters around the town, telling everybody how great the store is. So as a data scientist, would you just say, oh, Aunt Sally, just give me the data. It's fine, I'll sort it, I'll solve all your problems. No, there's a few steps before that. You'd first have a meeting with her and she'll tell you what she's trying to achieve, what she's already tried, and her theory around why it's not working. Then you would have to research and theorize what's going wrong. Maybe Aunt Sally's posters are pretty small and on a big highway, so all the cars passing by can't even see what the poster says. Or maybe they can read it, but the wording is just ineffective in convincing customers to come to her store. So then you'd get to the testing stage where you'd actually build models to do some of the foot traffic analysis to see if enough people are seeing the posters to make a difference. And then you'd have to experiment with the location of different posters. But that's not it because you also have to experiment with different wording, different colors on the posters and do a bunch of tweaking until you find the ideal solution and you go to your Aunt Sally and you're like, this is it. The models have spoken, this is the best approach. But to do that, you'll probably need to give her a presentation and at least show her the logic behind what you did. And then you have to try and convince her that your solution will actually work. So there's a few more steps than just building a model. But even that whole process will vary depending on what company you work at. But if being a data scientist sounds pretty good to you and you're wondering how you can become one, I have this 20 minute video that goes in depth and will tell you everything you need to know. And actually a couple of months ago, I saw a slight tweak in my role 
where I'm less of a pure data scientist now and much more of a data engineer slash analyst. So if you're interested in seeing what my day-to-day -day looks like now as a data engineer, just comment down below and it will 